break even and target operating income problem five. Crazy Coconut LLC has two products, jet boats and ski boats. Sales price per unit for jet boats is $12,000. Sales price per unit for ski boats is $24,000. Variable cost per unit for jet boats is $6,000. Variable cost per unit for ski boats is $14,000. Annual fixed costs are $300,000. What is the break even amount in units assuming that Crazy Coconut sells five jet boats for every two ski boats sold. So some of you are looking at this, you're like, whoa, how are we gonna do this? We've got two different products, we've got different sales prices, different variable costs, and we're trying to determine the break-even amount given two different products or a product mix. Yes, it does seem challenging, but really, we're gonna go slow through this, don't worry, take a breath, we'll get through it. It uses the same formulas with a few adjustments, and I promise you, it's not that bad. And it's actually really interesting. This is a, definitely the type of thing, very important in practice, because most businesses have more than one product they sell, and they got to understand which what's the mix to basically under, to determine the break-even or operating income, operating profit. And a lot of times, there's even constraints and resources, which you don't have here. You're just doing the break-even amount in terms of the number of units. So we're looking at break-even amount in units. Let's start with our formula for break-even amount in units. So break-even amount in units. Remember back to our formulas. It's going to be fixed costs plus our desired profit, which if we're doing a break-even question like this one, break even, the profit here is going to be zero. And we're going to divide that, that numerator by the contribution margin per unit. All right. So a few things or two major things to consider here because we have different products. First thing to take into mind is this contribution margin per unit. Well, how do we do that when we have two different products and different contribution margins? So the first answer, and that's a great question if you're thinking that, the first thing we have to add to this is we're going to have to use a weighted contribution margin, a weighted contribution margin based on the product mix, based on the product mix, and we will go through that. The second thing is that when we get to the end and we determine the number of units, the number of units, it's going to give us one number. It's going to give us one number. The second thing is it's going to give us, it's going to spit out a number. Well, what does that mean? How many of, of what? How many of what units? And the answer, and this one's a little bit more clear than the weighted contribution margin. How many of what? How many jet boats? How many ski boats? Well, the answer is we're going to use the ratio that the company sells the number of each unit to itself. So we're told that for every two ski boats, five jet boats are sold. So that's a five to two ratio. So we're definitely going to have to use that five to ratio when we get to that. So we use the ratio sold of what they've done in their business so far, what they've done in the business so far. So the first thing we need to do is we need to start off. These are basically two points. These number one, number two, these are two things that you add to the mix of when you have more than one product. The first thing we're going to do is do this weighted contribution margin. And it's not that challenging as the same sales minus variable costs, but we have to take into account the number of units, that ratio. But we adjust for the ratio sold. For the ratio sold. So we're going to go through this. We're going to calculate the contribution margin for the jet boat and we're going to weight it using the ratio sold and then we're going to calculate the contribution margin for the ski boat and basically we're going to add the two numbers together and then we're going to divide it by the total number in terms of the ratio which here it's a five to two ratio for we have five to two so basically the way I like to think of it is the lower number for every two ski boats sold, there's five. And what you do with ratios is you add the two together. So five plus two equals seven. So we, what we're going to do is we're going to take our contribution margin for the jet boat. We're going to multiply that by five. We're going to take the contribution margin by the ski boat. We're going to multiply that by two. And then we're going to divide everything in the end. We're going to divide it by seven. And that's going to give us a weighted approach, a weighted approach in terms of the number of units weighted approach. All right. So yeah, so you're starting to see, okay, oh, you know, this is not as bad as I thought it was. And it, yeah, it's, it's not. Okay. Contribution margin for the jet boat. All we're going to do is just take sales 
minus variable costs, which here, the amount of sales, 12,000 minus variable costs, 6,000. So that means that the contribution margin is 6,000 and we're going to multiply that by five. And then for the contribution margin for the ski boat, we're going to do a similar calculation. We're going to take 24 K minus 14 K, which equals 10,000. We're going to multiply that by two. So we're going to have 6,000. So 6,000 times five plus 10,000 times two, that's going to equal 30,000 plus 20,000 is 50,000. And then we take the 50,000 divided by seven. So 50, 000, these are all dollars. These are all dollars right here. My apologies. So these aren't units. These are dollars contribution margin per unit. So 50,000 divide that by seven, and we're going to get the contribution margin for all units at the company. And that's going to be 7,000. $142.86 per boat sold per boat. Okay. And that is our contribution margin per unit. So that $7,142.86 per boat is the contribution margin per boat sold per boat sold. All right. So now we can plug into our formula fixed costs. We're told are $300,000. And because we're breaking even that's zero. So fixed cost plus zero, that equals $300,000. We divide that by the seven, this number down here at the bottom we just calculated, the $7,142.86 per boat. And we're going to get a break even. And again, we always round up to the next of 42 boats. 42 boats to break even. Now we're not done because you're saying, okay, so we've already done number one, the, the, the first issue for this product mix question. We've already done the weighted contribution margin, $7,142.86 per boat. We did that by doing the ratio of five to two, right? Five sevenths and two sevenths. We've already got done that. We've just calculated the number of units to break even. So break even total at the company in units. It's 42 boats, but it's like, huh? What does that mean? 42 of what? Ski boats, jet boats? Is there some type of mix? There is a mix. And the way that we break that up is we basically are going to do the same ratio. We're going to use the same ratio sold that we've been using. Again, coconut sells five jet boats for every two ski boats sold. So the jet boats are going to be five over seven. The ski boats are going to be two over seven. And we're going to take five sevenths of 42 and two sevenths of 42. And we're going to get the breakdown. So the jet boat, five sevenths of that is going to be 30. And the ski boats, two sevenths of that, that's going to be 12, 12. So for jet, 30, ski, 12. So that is the end answer. The question is, what is the break even in units, which is 42 total. But again, you have to ask what specifically it's going to be 30 jet boats and 12 ski boats. And again, we had to do this by basically adjusting for the weighted amount through how many units they normally sell.